Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, and I'm here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here today slash tonight to talk to you about Sister Wives. Yeah. We got a couple of those old Rewind episodes that we're going to be going into, but we are also doubling up Mm -hmm. with 90 Day Fiance. Yes. The schedule change. The schedule change. We um, are moving things around. And just so that you know, we are covering Vanderpump Rules as well. But Mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to record those until like Thursday. So that means they're going to be released to the general public on Friday. Yes. Or Thursday if you're on Patreon. Oh, gosh. You better get on Patreon Mm -hmm. if that's what you want. Um, So that's what that's going to look like. So we have a full bill for tonight. Yes. Before we get into this episode, let me remind you, how'd you wife, how'd you kids? This is a politically incorrect podcast, which means we say dumb things. We have our own opinions. They're going to differ from yours. And that's okay get over it it's okay yeah so if you're sensitive you might want to find yourself another dumpster but if you are down with the raccoons welcome to this one yes and if you are down with the raccoons go follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe we finally crossed the five thousand mark <laughs> it's so funny because as soon as we hit five thousand i know you made an instagram story and you, you you texted me on whatsapp uh-huh. and you're like go and check out the story we made it to five thousand i'm like i hope somebody doesn't immediately unfollow and they did and they did <laughs> and it went down to four thousand ninety nine nine hundred ninety nine. i know and it. now it's over five thousand Woo! it's like five thousand and eleven i know we're fucking famous yay <laughs> Also, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash reality TV cringe. We're covering a bunch of bonus shows up on there. A thousand pound sisters, love after lockup, mm. uh, John, John and A plus Kate, gypsy sisters, gypsy sisters, welcome to Platteville, everything. So much. My 600 pound life, which That's is coming, coming up. It's coming up in March. New bitch. season starts in March. You must lose 30 pounds this month. <laughs> Why do you eat so much? <laughs> Um, I want to watch that for sure. Facts. I sent you the trailer for that. We're watching it that, bitch. It was fantastic. Why can't you post that to our Instagram? I'm going to post it. Post it to our Instagram so everybody Instagram. knows what's coming up. Yes, but join our Patreon because we're yeah. talking about all kinds of things there. And last but not least, if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Everything you do really does help us in the algorithm, and that means it helps us to grow. So thank you in advance thank you now before we get into sister wives henny we do have a little bit of news hashtag well, worthy up hashtag worthy up i wouldn't call it hot gossip yeah but i feel like this is a subject that we need to get into for sure <laughs> so i was watching nikki haverstock who's on youtube and she talks sister wives and 90 day fiance all the time mm-hmm And she was the first one to let us know that Mary Brown has launched a new website entitled (laughs) worthyup.com. Worthyup.com. She's trademarking that shit, dude. And then she made an Instagram post and she's already got her merch ready to go. Why don't we have our merch ready to go? Listen. Listen, you are our graphic (laughs) designer with absolutely no graphic design experience. None. I don't care. (laughs) It's better than what I could do. We have so many good ideas. We got to get that shit out. If Mary could do it, we could do it. Well, let's go on Fiverr and stuff. Okay, we got to find a graphic designer to help us to make our merch. Yeah. But she's already got journals. Oh, my God. With Worthy Up on the cover. Is she selling them already? Um, I no, she's okay. not because I went to the website and by the time I got there, she had dismantled dismantled the menu. <laughs> so you couldn't go to her about page, which Why? Nikki had been to. But I, having built a lot of websites, mm-hmm. was able to suss out what those additional pages would be called. Stop. And so I just did a backslash about <laughs> worthyup.com backslash about so it still exists yes and i was able to read her about page and also look at her merch page which is not developed and also um look at her community oh, no. sign up page so do we want to know a little bit what this is about yes yeah. this is what i found on her about page oh, about worthy up oh, as you explore worthy up immerse yourself in mary's insights oh, wisdom and the supportive community she's fostered stop Join the movement and let Mary be your mentor yeah. on the journey to just stop it. <laughs> no. Stop it. I know. Yes. No. 
Let me start no. again. Join the movement and let Mary be your mentor on the journey to discovering your inner string, honey. That was me. Honey. <laughs> Whether you're taking your first steps or well into your transformative journey, Worthy Up is here to uplift, inspire, and empower you. <laughs> Mary's vision is clear. To create a space where every woman recognizes her worth, embraces her uniqueness, and thrives in a community that celebrates individual and collective growth. And there are more words and sentences, but it's all pretty much the same. Puke. Dude. So she really... Okay. When you sent me this video from Nikki Haverstock, it mm -hmm. seemed like it was alluded to her starting a life coaching thing. she really thinks mentorship she can be a mentor yes. to other women and she's going to charge people however much I a mean, paragon if, if you well, i know how much because then i clicked from stop. there she has the there prices? was there was a link <laughs> there was a link on her about page no. to her sign up page so you can join her community it's called let's grow together <laughs> let's grow together <laughs> limited lifetime membership or special introductory price of $99 includes access to two members only videos per month, access to one members only Q&A live session per month, first chance at upgraded programs, special deals and promotions, and members only worthy up mug. Limited lifetime membership price will increase to one forty nine. <laughs> so get it now, get it while you can for Are ninety nine dollars. Yes. So what it feels like to me wow. is she's probably starting like a Facebook group. Oh, and my you're God. gonna have to sign up through her website. And you're gonna be given some information to help you find the Facebook group and to join it. And that's where she's gonna be doing lives. Maybe it's an Instagram group. I don't know. I cannot. I cannot right. believe that Mary fucking Brown thinks that she has mm. enough wisdom to impart on the masses I, uh, when she, her dumb, I don't want to be so mean Kay. because obviously Good. I like that. Uh, obviously <laughs> she was married to Cody Brown and he's an abusive narcissist. And so I have some compassion for her, but you stayed with this dude for 10 plus years when he wasn't touching your cookie and he was saying nasty, awful things about you on TV where you felt not worthy and you're going to, talk to people about yeah. how to feel worthy and about their lives. And it just ended in April of 2022. Yuck. And you were blindsided. <laughs> Irrespective of how For you want us to believe it, you were blindsided. You couldn't believe that he was the one who told you it's never, ever, ever going to happen. And that he doesn't care if you live or die. And that if you fuck other people, he doesn't care. I need to know, like, what kind of therapy have you done since then? Like, I what mean... kind of introspection have you undertaken? Mm. I understand you have a kind of a big age, not unlike myself. You have a lot of life experience. Sure. You certainly have learned a lot along the way. I but guess. you were just in this toxic and I dare say abusive relationship a year and a half ago. I so mean... what gives you the right to be a mentor? <sighs> And or life coach or whatever she's going to call herself when all she's done is lived in a cult or <laughs> a dysfunctional, abusive relationship. For real. I, I don't understand. This is why social media is so fucking toxic mm -hmm. because literally everybody and their mother thinks that they can be like a fitness guru or a fucking mentor or a spiritual coach like fucking Danielle from 90 Day Fiance. Oh my God, the worst charging toxic people, person in the world. The absolute worst. And she's charging people $300 for her right. courses and stuff. Like I cannot with this culture of like people acting like mm -hmm. they have so much to impart on people but like let me charge you mm -hmm. $150 for an annual membership like I'm fucking Amazon or something like what I have to give you is so valuable and I don't even know if this is the end price Ugh. because a lot of this seems like it's still being worked on mm -hmm. like when I went to the merch section it was all just like stock images mm -hmm. it's not actually her merch and so she's working on the website right now it could be more it could be less i mean 99 dollars for a lifetime membership is not that much to get that content and so i'm not going to complain about that okay because i believe in online education personally and i've yeah. actually had programs in the past that i have run but when i tell you they were content dense honey and what i offered for uh, the students that I had was, uh, I think, a tremendous amount. So like, so for what she's offering, two videos a month, a live Q&A, yeah. for $99 for your whole life, that's great if you love Mary Brown. But it's probably also going to be a subscription thing where you're going to have to pay $25 mm -hmm. a month. 
And that's okay too, if there's people who want to do that. But I'm just like, based on what though? I mean, really. And like if her retreats are anything like how this is going to be like with her charging $6,000 for you, not even to like stay at Lizzie's Heritage Inn and not even have like good food catered for everybody. Like you're getting fucking barbecue from the local joint in right. Parowan, Utah. Like I just, to me, I'm like, I can't see her content being that worthwhile to me like and i don't want to be mean but i'm just like come on like what do you have of value write a fucking book yes like, we would read a tell-all book yes 100 percent. we would read like a series of tell-all and books. you would make a lot of money so i think you'd have money. a publisher i would think you'd get an advance yes. i think that there's a lot of us out here if you told us the whole truth nothing but the truth that would spend good money on that book for sure and you'd get interviews up the ass just like christine with all mm -hmm. these people magazine things like you would get fame and you would get a lot of money you don't need to fucking rip people off and try to give them mentor and life ship advice but the, the thing is i think she thinks i don't think she's trying to rip anybody off honestly i mean she sure. isn't an mlm she has historically <laughs> been in a lot of mlms that's very problematic yeah. because mlms are predatory but like when you take that component out of it and you just look at mary and everything that she's been through i have a lot of compassion for her i'm sure she feels like she's learned a lot i'm sure she feels like she's enriched and edified and can teach a young woman how to avoid the pitfalls of marrying somebody like cody brown i'm sure there's a lot of great things that you could offer but like until you actually take real time to heal yes like if you're trying to heal other people while right. you're not healed yourself like you just do damage to other people yes so show me where show me on the doll yeah. <laughs> you know, show me where you actually did the work right i because agree it was 2022 right so don't act like you're like some expert in all of this stuff when you're dealing with your own shit and that's totally fine like we're all damaged people we're all going through our stuff we're all learning nobody's fucking perfect nobody's like a perfect guru or anything like that but i'm just like to to try and act like a mentor when you're still dealing with all that shit it's just i mean you can be one you can have a group around I you guess. but like when you then monetize it yeah right and kind of become the authority on it by right. virtue of monetizing it and creating a platform around it then i'm like you got to be in integrity to do something yes. like that and i think maybe she thinks that she is but i'm like maybe. honey i don't i don't think so but you do mlms and right. you think that that's okay you're still doing lula you're still ripping people off in that way right. you know and it would be one thing if she had like a support group or like some kind of online community that she held for people that like wasn't behind a super high paywall and she was just like there offering support for women who have left fundamentalist religions who have left narcissistic abusive relationships like that would be totally one thing it's another to be like right. Let me teach you how to hashtag worthy up. Yeah. And I'm sure she has good intentions with it. So I'm not, I don't think she's like a bad person. Well, for but doing I mean, it. I also think she wants to profit. Yes. I mean, when you look at the prices of her retreats, let us remind you, she $6, was running $6. a retreat for how many days? Uh, like four days. Like a four day retreat. Yeah. Like at tears, it was like a $2,000, $4,000, $6,000 <laughs> price point yeah. and you're just going to the haunted b&b &B in parowan utah with that terrible wallpaper i know and you know you have to eat on paper plates that first retreat was really bad so i can see the industry she's trying to move into and yeah. i think she can probably leverage her celebrity but i just feel like mm, uh, i wouldn't bad look man but then janelle had her website from like 2016 called Thrive with Janelle when she was also going to be some kind of a life coach. Mm, I don't know why. That's what I'm saying. It's like social media and fame. Like mm -hmm. all these people think that they have like this wisdom to impart. And but they also know that their fan base loves them and that they would do pretty much anything to like get any kind of content from them. I mean, fucking Jasmine on 90 Day Fiance has like an OnlyFans and she's got like this other thing where she gives people like birthday wishes and like different types of 
advice as well. Vent to me. Vent to me. You have one hour to just vent to me and I'll be here listening. Like, what the fuck? It's very bizarre. And she charges like $100 for yeah. that. And well, then- what about the OnlyFans girl who charged for her farts in jars? Dude, I so, I mean, like, if you can monetize it and make money off it, I mean, go get your bag. But, like, when you're talking about a healing industry, right. like, when you're talking about people who are really struggling and might have, like, significant trauma, like, you got to be extra careful. Yes. And I, so I just, I feel I'm dubious about what Mary's doing. 100%. It's kind of weird. But we'll see how it evolves, I we guess. We will definitely be watching Shit. with our raccoon monocle, honey. Hey. All right. Let's get into the episodes yes. of Sister Wives because... Each episode was like 10 minutes. Half, yeah, like a half an hour. So we did two of them for this. Yeah. Um, Sister Wives, we are in season four mm-hmm. and we are going to be covering episode three and four. Now, episode three is entitled Brutal Honesty and that speaks to Christine and Robin mm-hmm. having a sit down at last where Christine is going to talk to Robin about how she's been struggling so deeply with her jealousy. Yep. And so they're trying to patch things up. It's also Cody's birthday. Yes. It's 2012. He's turned 44. Mm-hmm. That means, how old is he? I don't know. 50 something now? So he's 55, 56 right yeah. now. Um, and so we're going to have a birthday. And there were a couple of other things that were going on in this episode that I thought were really interesting, like the surrogacy, uh-huh. the real estate licensure and uh-huh. such. So this episode starts with the preparations for Cody's birthday. Mm-hmm. We've got Logan, the real parent <laughs> of the Brown clan, the real sweeping dad. in to take all of the littles, well, all the little girls and Gabe. Mm-hmm. He's going to be taking them to what looks like Hobby Lobby or to Michael's. They're going to be picking out some craft stuff so that they can make Cody a scrapbook Which and a cute. poster for his birthday. And we see Logan just so sweet it's like a 17 year old boy Mm -hmm. who's got his own life i presume totally he probably likes girls in sports of course but here he is with this gaggle of kids at the michaels getting them their craft supplies he's a sweet kid like they did something right with him even though he is parentified and he kind of alludes to it in this he's like talking about when he leaves for college i think right and moves out and he's like i don't know how that's going to change the family dynamic and like what part am i going to be leaving behind in my family i'm like oh yeah the parent (laughs) yeah that's what you're going to be leaving i'm worried about my children yes who's going to be taking care of the little ducklings when i'm gone because i know these assholes (sighs) cody just sits in a recliner christine's just mad all the time my mom's working all the time janelle's just working or checked out yeah you know and mary's also mad too yeah. robin's making out with dad on the recliner <laughs> so what's gonna happen to the kids i thought it was sweet though yes i did too and when we see the ultimate gifts that the kids made that oh. also was really cute oh my so god touching. i loved it after that we have all the wives meeting over at mary's house mary is still laid up if you recall last week she went skiing for her ultimate date night with cody <laughs> promptly tore her mcl and now she's laid up for eight weeks and so the other wives come to her and they are i guess packing like little gift bags for the kids for cody's party and they are talking about what they're gonna get for cody's birthday what did you what did did you notice the thing here a little bit okay with robin yeah yeah (laughs) with robin because they're talking about like what to get him and i think like christine talks about like a watch and then something gets brought up with a computer and robin's like well do we have the money for it do we have the money for it Mm. do you all have the money for it because i ain't got no money i ain't got no i got debt right (laughs) that's what i got i thought that was interesting Mm -hmm. and mary kind of in a superior tone just as well it depends on how much each wife has in their budget for this robin Mm. like you've got money in your budget don't you and robin's just like nursing solomon she's like I don't know. Sure. I mean, I guess. I guess after my bills or whatever. And you know what I'm just thinking of just now? Mm -hmm. I wonder if Robin's getting child support for Dayton, Mm. Aurora, and Brianna. Oh, yeah. Because if they're divorced, presumably she should be getting child support for all three of them. And I'm like, where's that money going? And how much money does she get? Because like when I was a child and my biological father had to pay child support, he was like an electrician, so it wasn't like a huge amount of money. But how I mean, much was it? It was like oh, let me try and remember. I think it was like four hundred every two weeks, mm-hmm. so like eight hundred a month. But I'm like that was mm-hmm. okay. 
And then when I came, became 18, I got to keep that money. Yeah. Because I'm an adult now. But um, I wonder how much she's getting for the three of them. Because that was just for me. That was just don't for ask me. me how much I got. You got a lot because your husband was rich. I got. Well, I don't know about got a lot. You got. But a it lot. was a, it was a blending of maintenance or alimony plus child support. It was just like one lump sum oh, each month. Right. Plus, I got a portion of his bonuses at the end of his year. How much? Uncensored. So back to the regular pod. <laughs> um, yeah, I do wonder whether she got child support. That is such a good question because I know ultimately that Robin obviously. Um, has Cody adopt her children, which means that Preston has to give up his paternal rights. Mm -hmm. But up until the time that he does, you would presume he would owe support for those kids. And that's why I wonder, like, maybe she wasn't getting child support because, you know, what would be the incentive to have Cody adopt the kids? Like, if you were really struggling for money or if you were needing the money, you would milk that shit Mm -hmm. from Preston until those kids are 21. That's what a lot of parents do. So, I mean... I don't know. Maybe he wasn't giving any. I don't know. If any raccoons out there know whether she collected child support and or how much she collected, honey, we would love to know because that would speak to what she would be able to contribute to something like a really nice gift for Cody. But it just is interesting that she seems so out of touch with the financials Mm -hmm. and the contributions that are expected from all four wives, almost as if she's really never asked to contribute. And rather, it's the other three wives who end up contributing and covering Robin, which obviously we see when they get to Flagstaff. And we've got Mary and Janelle going out of their pocket to pay for Robin's deposit down payment for the home yes and that would also speak to her character because if she's getting this extra income that she could be contributing to this family pot when it's really just fucking janelle paying for everything and tlc right now at this fucking point nobody else is working that would be so shitty if she was like hiding her child support i mean i get it like it's for your kids whatever it's child support i get it but if it's like extra income that could be distributed or helped out i mean but we are fabricating stories that we don't know are true but yeah i could see it i could see it based on how things have worked out that she would not necessarily be super forthcoming with her resources versus taking the family's resources i want to know too honey after this we've got christine taking baby truly who's 20 (laughs) months old and she's still got no hair whatsoever anywhere on her head ball that's how I was Little until toe I head. was like three. Yeah, oh God, so <laughs> just cute. bald. Everyone thought Just I was a little boy. Wisps <laughs> of hair, suggestions, approximations of hair. She takes little Truly over to Robin's house mm-hmm. because, of course, Robin gave birth to Solomon three months previous, and they want to weigh both of the kids because Solomon's—he's a chunk. Yes, it's a big old roly poly baby cute. boy. He is cute. He's so um wispy now. Yeah, he's so thin and everything. Tiny. It's like. Interesting Elvish. that he was such a big boy. Big old chunky boy. So Christine arrives and she puts Truly on the scale. Truly weighs 19 pounds <laughs> at 20 months with like all of her clothes, a coat and her shoes on. <laughs> and then Robin gets on the scale with Solomon and I think it was 173 pounds. Mm-hmm. And then she gets off the scale, gives the baby to Christine. You know, I'm watching. I am monocling, mm-hmm. blocking the weight because it's such an issue for me. I'm like, how much does she weigh? Uh huh. So gives the baby to Christine and then gets up on the scale herself. And she was 157 with her shoes and with her clothes on. So they deduce after doing mathematics, which <laughs> is something sciencey and magical, that Solomon weighs 16 pounds. So three pounds less, and he's a fucking baby. He's a, baby. <laughs> truly, a little bitty baby. Truly just this tiny little thing. Yes. She's so fucking cute in these early episodes. She really is. Oh, my God. Very adorable. After that, they make their way to some Greek grill Yeah. to have the conversation that I don't know about you, Beatrice, but I feel that Christine is having this conversation creating this moment with Robin because she has been told, I don't know about expressly, but certainly it has been suggested to Christine by now that if she doesn't make this shit right with Robin, she's got a real fucking problem with Cody. Yep. So she's got a cow town to her and be like, look, it's not you. It's me and Cody. It's mm-hmm. it's Cody. That's the problem. It's not you. I promise. Right. Even though in her talking head, Christine's like, yeah, I did have problems with Robin. I thought she was the enemy. So I'm like, okay, we can't actually, this episode's entitled Brutal Honesty, mm-hmm. and we still can't even be fully honest in the moment. 
And so it's like at the restaurant, Christine opens up about it and is like, look, I was just really jealous, like so incredibly jealous. I never thought me and Cody could ever have any problems in our marriage. And then Robin's like, yeah, I took it personally. It just made me feel really bad because I thought that you hated me. Right. And I mean, you guys had to sign off and approve on me coming into the family. And if y'all had said one word of no to Cody, he would not have let me come into the family. Do we not believe that? No, I don't believe that. And then she says right after that, she's like, I don't know how you guys let me in. Right. I'm like, that's kind of a weird thing to say, isn't it? Well, I mean, it could just be simple acknowledgement of Christine's struggle. Like, yeah, I don't even know how you would fucking do that. In other words, I don't know how I would have to do that. Mm, yeah. If there was a fifth wife, which yeah. we get into into the next episode. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how I would be able to do that. She also says that she called her mother. Yeah. That home wrecking bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Living in her happy house, dividing yep. the previous family. Um, and her mother said, don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. They're just adjusting and shifting around you. It's not personal to you. And Christine is definitely going out of her way to let Robin know. Absolutely not. It is not about you. Like you said, um, it's about Cody because Cody left me. Like she actually said that. Yeah. She said, Cody, you know, promised that things were going to be a certain way. I felt abandoned because Cody left me. And Robin's like, well, why did he leave you? And then Christine, like a battered wife, says, because I'm jealous, because every time he comes over, like the dynamic is fucking off because I'm like, I just can't be happy. So I'm just going to be grateful. I'm so grateful for all the children that I have and all my wives and everything. I'm happy. I promise. I'm happy. Thanks for that pep talk, Mary, in the last episode telling me that it's my fault and that I need to just be grateful and swallow my problems. Problems yes. because Cody will never fix anything. Mm-mm. It's really sad. And then I was like getting annoyed with Robin in this scene because she's taking it all personally still and sitting there crying. And she's like, well, I just felt like you hated me. And it's like, Robin, why can't you step outside of yourself a little bit, though, and see it from the wife's perspective? You can't. Because you've got Cody wrapped around your finger. So to you, it's just like unbelievable. Like, why don't they like me? Because their marriages are failing with Cody and yours is thriving. Right. (laughs) That's literally why. Right. And she even says it. She's like, my mom told me that it's not to take it personally because it's about my position Mm -hmm. in the family. Right. As the favorite wife. As as the last wife and Mm -hmm. as the favorite wife. So I thought that was very interesting. Um, I felt really bad for actually both of them because I still feel like there's a shimmer a glimmer of innocence in Robin at this point she's not Mm -hmm. entrenched in her goddamn position yet she's Mm -hmm. not like drunk with power yet like she's still uh, ascending to the throne she's not there Mm -hmm. yet so I feel like she is maybe a little bit open to having this conversation with Christine but I feel like she I feel like Christine makes her very uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and as we see Christine on the couch like dominating the conversations like the decibels in her voice are like twice as high as anybody else. Like she's yelling like a McKelty yep. out on the couch when everybody else is speaking in quiet tones. Like, I don't think, I don't think Robin likes her. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think Robin actually would ever be her friend if mm-hmm. it wasn't for the sister wives. No way. I think she thinks she's too much. And I wonder if she says that kind of shit or reaffirms that shit to Cody. Mm-hmm. Cause I bet Cody probably goes over to Robin's house and then totally bitches about Christine. Mm-hmm. Probably bitches about the other wives too, but mainly Christine because it's, obvious in these episodes that cody does not fucking like christine Mm -hmm. it is really obvious oh my god i'm surprised by it but like i haven't seen him have any genuine affection like wanting to hang out with my like home girl who i love and ride or die with like i haven't seen that since maybe season one and even that it was like such a whirlwind because he was dating robin and and christine had just had truly so like there was too much going on but Yeah, you don't like her. No. And I think after this lunch, Robin goes home with her baby and Cody comes home and he's like, well, how'd it go? Did she apologize? Did she say X, Y, and Z? How did it make you feel? Yeah. Still feel bad because blah, blah, blah. And so it emboldens Cody to continue to treat Christine like shit. Yes, probably. And then when they talk shit about her and he's like, oh, she's so loud or she puts me down. Robin's like, yeah, I have noticed that. She probably says shit Mm -hmm. like that to him, Mm -hmm. you know, because even on the couch with some of those moments where Cody is like getting annoyed with Christine and Christine's just saying some shit. You can see it on Robin's face too. Mm -hmm. Like Robin has the same hard 
expression. Yes. Yeah. It's very interesting to see. It is when you're looking with different eyes mm-hmm. from 2023, 2022, honey. Mm-hmm. So after this lunch where Christine has to prostrate herself and <laughs> beg for mercy, yeah, um, we go to Cody's birthday. But before that, we have a little scene where Janelle and Christine go to some local real estate office to read their real estate manuals and study together i guess for their license i don't understand which they never end up getting i think well do janelle they? does i think janelle but does. that's it <laughs> i don't think christine does so the interesting thing about this to me is that this was one of the family endeavors that they were all going to do together except for robin because robin don't work yes like cody was going to do it mary was going to do it and then now the only two standing are janelle and christine and Christine is kind of wishy-washy because she saw the book and she's like, oh, fuck. I've got fuck to, this math. I've got to read that. I've got to memorize that. I, yes. I don't know if I can do it. But then she comes back around, realizes I got to get a job. Mm-hmm. And so it's just those two that are doing it. Um, but they mention in this particular scene that Cody got the book because he was going to do it too. And he realized, oh, I have to study for this shit. <laughs> fuck that. Absolutely not. Which is crazy to me. So he's not wanting to get a job. Because why? Because you're doing TLC? Well, he's doing his dumb MLM because last episode he got oh, the rose right. gold Nissan. With his fucking... Se- yeah. I didn't see it this episode, though. Remember, that's month to month. And as soon as you're not profitable, honey, you got to pay that lease. So where's the fucking convertible now? Maybe that's what's in all their boxes in the McMansion. Flash forward to 2024. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's all of his MLM bullshit. <laughs> Probably. His stock that he buys for right. shit so he can get a new car, lease it. I do think that's what he's doing <laughs> for work, but I don't I don't know what Mary's doing. I think Mary at this time is doing MLM stuff. She's probably doing the live, the L I V oh, yeah. with Cody, mm-hmm. I imagine. But I mean, I feel like it's very conspicuous that Mary's not talking about what she's doing to contribute to this family at all. Yeah, like what are you guys doing? You have all these fucking rents that you have to care about and then you're going to get the cul-de-sac and you have all these mortgages that you have to deal with. Like, what are y'all doing? And then Robin. And then Robin. Robin's lazy ass. (laughs) I mean, I know she just had a child. I get it. And Solomon's three months old. But before Solomon even came, she didn't want to attend those meetings. Like, she never had an intention Mm -hmm. in any any way at all to contribute financially to this fucking household it's crazy to me it's absolutely wild if i'm hopping up there if i'm break dancing into this fucking brown family knowing that they're having a hard time feeding their fucking kids they're on food stamps right and i'm gonna integrate integrate my three kids into their family that's already struggling you better believe i'm getting a job I'm contributing. I'm thinking about that. Well, she is doing something. She's creating my sister wife's <laughs> closet and designing that oh, God, beautiful jewelry. That. Yeah. So right. that's what they're doing. So she's, she's doing. still a drain on the family because yes. that's not making any money. Not and at in all. order to have like mock-ups and things of that nature, she's got to pay for it. But like, oh my God. Just wait until what they do a the fucking, fucking parasite. Dude, just wait. <laughs> just wait till we get to the fucking expos and shit and the fucking pitch for their business. I live. I cannot wait. So much money. It gives wasted. me hope for tomorrow. <laughs> Knowing that it's, it's coming. so great. Um, and the episode ends uh, with Cody's birthday party at Janelle's home. Janelle doesn't have to do anything because, of course, Christine and all of the parentified children are coordinating, organizing, and executing everything that needs to get done to keep this family moving. Uh-huh. They have a party for Cody. And first, the little kids who, again, went with Logan to the Michaels to, to make crafts, crafts. made like little scrapbooks. They <sighs> give it to Cody. So cute. And Cody says it's adorable. Yeah. Little Savannah takes money <sighs> out of her piggy bank, like $4.34 or something. Gives it all to him. Gives it all to him. <laughs> She's so sweet. She's so fucking thoughtful. She reminds me of my little sister. Does she? Yes. Really? Little Nova? Yeah. Oh my God, little She was Nova. always so thoughtful like that. She would create things for our birthdays and shit. And she would write like big, long, like oh, books and stuff. Like sweet. she was so cute. So Savannah is so fucking cute. I Isn't can't it stand it. Isn't it interesting that you can see the nature of a person yes. at such a young age because when we see her at 18 years old she's still the demure mm-hmm. soft-spoken but very gentle Thoughtful. gorgeous generous girl that she was when she was a little kid yeah and then you look at Gabe punching out Garrison I mean like they are also that that carries over into yes. their adulthood I think it's so fantastic yeah um and at some point the wives who again had to collaborate to get Cody a present, mm-hmm. present him with said present, which is a laptop. Uh-huh. 
a nice laptop. It's I don't like know, an Apple laptop. Is it like a Mac or something? Yeah. Like a MacBook or something yeah. like that? And he opens it and his response is lackluster to say the least. He's like, oh, great. A tool. Great. Love it. And they're like, you're not excited about it? I thought you wanted a laptop. And he's like, yeah, I guess. But, you know, I wanted a fun gift. Wow. Because now I look at the laptop and now I know they want me to get a job. Yes. Well, he he says, I know that it's expensive and I'm wondering where they got the money from. That's the first thing he says. They saved up for it, you asshole. Which indicates that at this time in 2012, after we're on our fourth season now of Sister Webs, they still don't have a lot of liquidity, honey. Mm -hmm. They don't have a lot of money. They probably had to put it on credit. Maybe a Victoria's Secret card. I don't know. Um, but he's not happy. So he's worried about the money. And then I also know if I have a laptop, I've got to work. Unbelievable. I heard you say that, Cody. I mean, it slipped out right there. It sure did. And then him saying, I wanted a fun gift. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? How is a laptop not fun? You could play games on a laptop. You could watch porn on a laptop. porn. Mormon porn. (laughs) It's got to be great. For real. Yeah, he's very ungrateful. Very. Which Christine calls out yep obnoxiously totally <laughs> on the couch as they're talking about it and she's um mocking him like his response is really robotic and you can tell he's mad mm-hmm. his strained smile mm-hmm. on his face like i fucking hate you christine and then fucking robin right bitch yeah straight up says i kind of knew he didn't want a laptop i know but he needed it so it's okay I know. After all of the women were like, yeah, we really wanted to get it for we you. you like it. We know you like a- expensive things. This is like the most expensive laptop. And so they're all trying to justify why they did it. And then Robin's like, yeah, but like I, I knew I that knew. he wouldn't want it because of course he spends time at my house and not yours. I speak Cody, so yes. I know what he wants. I thought that was very illuminating, mm. I've got to say. So mm. that was the end of that episode. We have one more episode to yep. get through. Now this was just a and a so we're not going to take too long with this, yes. but I, I selected some Good. of the questions from the episode that I thought were germane to where we are today. Good. And so we've got the the uh, four wives and Cody on the couch for the entire thing. We've got, I guess, audience members writing in with their questions. Yes. And we've got the family, the adults answering those questions. Okay. So one of the questions was, have you ever wondered whether it was worth it? Mm, like polygamy is worth it. Or all of the shit that you're going <laughs> through. Because then they flash back yeah. to like moving out to of Vegas. Lehigh, going to Vegas, like the five tire flats they had on the way, the arguments, Janelle's pissed off. This is fucking circus. <laughs> I can't stand any of you people. And then they come back and say, yeah, I mean, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's difficult being, you know, with 22, 25, however many people are in this family. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't give it up for the world. So great. Polygamy is my calling. I guess. Heart of the father. (laughs) We're doing it for God. I mean, I guess the only good thing out of all of this is all of the cheering. Mm -hmm. all of the kitties. And that's great. But I'm like watching these flashbacks and I'm like, I could not be in a family that is so disorganized no. so financially irresponsible so just like fly by the seat of their pants just do whatever cody and janelle were the only fucking ones working for the majority of the time i could not no i'd be so over it i would be exasperated mm. i would be screaming at people yeah. i would be brass knuckling cody <laughs> right in his face <laughs> for real sick um then we get the question does cody spend more time with a wife after she has a baby of course Mm -hmm. at this point robin has just had solomon Mm -hmm. but it wasn't too long ago that christine had truly Mm -hmm. and his question was really quick and he's like yes period Mm -hmm. which means that at this time he is spending more time he's already spending more time with robin and i think it's fair if you've got one of your wives who has a baby that you should be there to help out But the fact of the matter is I really question whether he did that for Christine when we saw him leave her her hospital room Uh while she's in the process of giving birth to this child. Pushing her out of her vagina. And you went to Robin's house. To kiss her. To kiss her. Yes. And I think they actually talk about this in the later seasons, if I remember correctly, where they call him out on that. And they're like, you've used the babies as an excuse because Robin just had King Solomon and then she's going to have one more baby after that. So then that's going to be another excuse for him to be like, well, but I have to be at Robin's house all the time. 
because right. she had just had the baby. She needs my help. Even and though they got a nanny. Using it, he's using it in 2020, 2021. Yep. I've got to be around the babies. They can't be out of town for longer than three or four days because of the babies. It's always been the excuse. It has always been the excuse. It's really interesting to see it so early on. Mm-hmm. Um, another question was, do the wives wonder what it would be like to have Cody all to themselves 100% of the time? Mm-hmm. And Cody's the one who says, oh, I'm sure they do. I mean, like, we all think about that. Yeah. And Mary's like, excuse me? <laughs> I actually don't think about that. Like, I only ever consider my marriage in terms of my other sister wives. Mm. And Cody's Robin. like, what are you talking about? You said you did. And she's like, I never said that. Do we believe her? Yeah. Yeah, I believe I her I kind of do. Yeah. I think he's just using it as an excuse because, because Robin. And because he's thinking yes. about only spending 100% of his time or spending his whole time with Robin. And he just assumes, he projects onto them the other wives that they feel the same way. Mm. Christine's like, I married the man, but I especially married the family. I'm so grateful for my family. Uh-huh. And sometimes I would feel abandoned by Cody, but then I would realize, oh my God, look at all these kids that I have to take care of in the basement by of myself. the house by myself. And look at all these kids and I love them. Uh-huh. So she's definitely trying to get back in Cody's good graces. Yep. We have one audacious audience member asking whether they use protection. I know. And they kind of all pause. Like yeah. Cody looks at the paper and doesn't look up at the camera which is kind of interesting i was wondering what that was about i'm like does he does he not want to answer it because he's not fucking some of the wives like i wonder if it's i don't need protection if i'm not fucking them (laughs) or like he's using protection with the three og but not robin because you know it just feels so good i'm just saying (laughs) God. I'm just saying, I'm just thinking in the mind of Cody Banging Brown. her raw feels so good. Oh. Yikes. Well, Gross. Janelle's like, I'm not answering that. That's an intimate personal question. <laughs> and I respect that. <laughs> um, they ask, uh, how do the wives keep their jealousy in check? And they flash back to Mary having the conversation with Cody in season one when they're out for the anniversary. And she's like, well, how would you like it, Cody? Like, if I were out here giving my attention to another man, like, how would that feel? And Cody says, well, that is just a vulgar, it's a vulgar (laughs) fucking notion, Mary. So he can't even begin to comprehend how it would feel if the tables were turned on him. No, of course not. Because he lacks that ability because he's a fucking narcissist. He doesn't give a shit about anybody else's feelings but his own. Well, and his religion completely enables his narcissism and his centering of himself. Facts. Which is sad. Mm -hmm. Um, They ask if there's going to be a fifth wife. Yeah. Which Which, is interesting. You know, we're kind of asking in the year of our Lord 2024, is Cody going to onboard a new wife? Because otherwise, why do we need them? We don't need them on our TV. Why are they here? Get off of our TV. We don't need to see you anymore unless you... I will be here if you bring in a fifth wife. Are you kidding me? Or now a second wife? Yeah. But he says no. He's like, I'm almost certain the answer is no. Unless, of course, there's some kind of holy inspiration from my father on high. Mm -hmm. And he tells me... I should take another wife. But if I don't hear it directly from the mouth of God, the answer is no. Robin would never allow that. She no. would never allow that. No. Especially if she was younger and prettier than Robin. She mm-hmm. would never. Right. Never go for that. She can't conceive of ever being in Christine's position. Nope. Not she at all. She would never want that for herself. Then somebody asks, what would you do if one of your kids came out? Yeah, and Janelle's like, I assume this means as a homosexual. Mm -hmm. And she's like, "Um, with as many kids as we have, the statistics are high that we'll probably have at least one. Right. Maybe two. And they do. Right. (laughs) They They do do. actually at at least two, I think. Mm -hmm. Gwen Mm -hmm. and Leon, yeah? Right. So, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. She was right. Yes. And they were pretty chill about it. They're like, we don't really care. I mean, like, we would be sad. I think Robin says this. Well, let's break the bitch down, honey, because Janelle's like, it wouldn't change my life at all. Then Christine, who's just dumb. Yeah. She's like, well, I mean, if one of my children liked a same sex part, same sex partner, then that person couldn't come over and stay the night in her room. And I would have to, I'm like, shut up, I know. shut up. Yeah. And then they got to Robin mm-hmm. and Robin said, well, I would actually be sad because their life would be difficult and I wouldn't want them to have to live, you know, in a world that doesn't accept them. And I thought, well, that seems enlightened, but I wonder about that. Yeah. 
Of course, when Leon came out, Mm -hmm. Robin was the first one to hug Leon and encourage Leon. And that was really awesome. But I mean, I don't know. And there's been like rumors about Cody and Robin trying to affiliate once again with the AUB. Mm -hmm. And of course, the doctrine of the AUB allegedly is very homophobic, Mm -hmm. um, anti-LGBT. And there's also rumors that Cody has had a falling out with Leon because potentially of Leon's transition. We don't know if any of this is true. This is just what's out there in the streets. But I just, I was watching her very closely when she answered that question. I was side-eyeing it. It seemed very performative. Like she's just saying it just to get the brownie points for the the fans and stuff. Because I think at this point in time, Cody and Robin are very aware of like how they're presenting things that's why they're very quiet they have the pained smiles on their faces when christine's annoying the fuck out of them they don't say anything Mm -hmm. they don't want to get into any of their marital issues they want to put on this facade that they're this happy loving amazing family that gets along with everybody so i think that was just her pandering i don't know if she actually just a pr statement yeah i mean especially if what's true like about the whole leon situation now in 2024 with their relationships and everything i don't know i don't know if i buy it yeah i don't either so but i'm not going to not buy it because i i don't want to ascribe like poisonous homophobia to anybody like unfoundedly yeah Uh, but i was definitely cocking an eyebrow in her direction yes the last question that i picked out before we end this particular segment um somebody asked robin specifically how she now feels about divorce generally after she's gone through her own divorce Mm -hmm. and she's like it's really hard it's really sad (gasps) hold on (gasps) i think she paused she had to pause like the filming two to three times yes oh i have to collect myself (gasps) my victimhood is not prominent enough please hold she's like i didn't want to divorce my husband i wanted to stay generating tears i'm like generating tears okay didn't he leave you though didn't i don't he? know i think he did I don't know the story i thought it was confirmed that he was the one that initiated the divorce can some raccoon investigate and let us know in the comments well she does say i tried really hard to stay that. in this marriage mm-hmm. i gave it everything i had okay. to keep my family together but it just didn't work out. is that what the victoria's secret debt was <laughs> you were trying to buy things to well, spice of things up of course you know i believe they go on in subsequent seasons to really vilify her Mm ex-husband which is the um reason that we're gonna have cody ultimately uh, allegedly adopt these kids yeah so but the fact is that preston's family has come out and said actually it was robin who was the problem robin was the one who had a spending issue what was that oh i just said "Mm." oh i thought it was the the sound (laughs) robin's one with the spending issue robin was the one i don't know if they called her directly abusive but like that was an instigator in a lot of the problems and it wasn't preston which Mm. is he said she said Uh i don't know but the way she paints herself in this moment as such a victim i'm just like oh i see where we're gonna be going oh yeah in the seasons to come oh for sure because i wonder if she thinks like the other wives look down on her for it or whatever but i'm like janelle was divorced before Mm -hmm. she came to cody so it's like not that big of a deal she's just always like always pretending to be the victim and Mm -hmm. always just like i'm but i'm innocent Right. I've got a good heart. I love everybody. I have no malicious intent at all whatsoever. Right. I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, okay. I'm not really sure, sure about Jan. that. Not sure about that. Nope. Well, for as boring as <laughs> these episodes were, yeah. there was a lot of interesting information. Yeah. <laughs> there just are things that they're saying in these earlier seasons that really help us to put things together, like puzzle pieces yes. from season 18 season 17 season 16 things start to really really make sense yes when you go back and look at it it's really interesting to see i'm like did anybody like pick up on the fact that cody and christine hated each other from the very get-go or were people actually believing this facade i wonder i mean if you were watching from way back then did you guys notice that or because did you guys think everything was great i'm like looking at this shit i'm like dude they've been hating each other like they've been having problems like christine in this in the last episode was asked acting like they had this great marriage when she was talking to Robin. Like, I never thought we could have problems. I'm like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. You were the basement wife. Right. Like, he did not care about you. He left you at the hospital. You were telling Mary just a little while ago, I am not over it. The courtship is a real big fucking problem for me. Maybe it just took seeing him with another wife, like with Robin, for her to be like, oh, shit. We've got a lot of problems and we need to fix it. And he's just like, I don't care. 
Yeah. I'm checked out. I'm already knee deep in another pussy. I have already melted down Mary's ring. Yep. I'm already detached from all you bitches. I am on my new merry way. Yep. With my favorite Robin. <laughs> Breakdancing pussy. That's right. Good stuff. Yeah. 